After waking up at 3.30 in the morning, we headed to Union Station in DC to take the eight hour train ride to Boston. settled into our hotel, had dinner at the Barking Crab, and then walked around the Boston seaport. Until the late 1800s, most of the land that now makes up the seaport was underwater. Now it's the fastest growing district in Boston. We mainly walked around Fan Pier Park and watched the sailboats and yachts. There are several signs and art pieces along the pier that explain the seaport's history. We were there at a great time, just as the sun was setting. Since we stayed in the seaport district, we walked back to our hotel and rested up for the next day. For our first full day in Boston, we visited the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, which opened to the public in 1903. If your name is Isabella, you actually get into the museum for free. The museum was founded by Isabella Stewart Gardner and mainly contains her personal art collection, consisting of pieces she collected during her travels around the world. Isabella had fertility issues and was told she couldn't have children. There are lots of art pieces in her collection revolving around mothers and children, especially that of Mother Mary and Jesus. The museum was in the middle of restoring one of its rooms to make it resemble how it would have originally looked when it first opened. And it's not cheap either. The fabric on the walls cost about $1,000 per yard. In 1990, 13 works of art were stolen from the museum and neither the culprits nor the artwork have been found. The stolen artwork is said to be worth $500 million. There are empty frames around the museum to signify which pieces have been stolen. We couldn't resist the urge to try out Wahlburgers after touring the museum. Honestly, we weren't that impressed, but at least we could say we ate there. Another opportunity we couldn't resist was riding a swan boat on the lagoon in Boston Public Garden. It's only $4.50 per person and was super scenic. Perfect. We stopped by my favorite part of Boston, Beacon Hill. 
Beacon Hill got its name from a beacon that once sat up on the hill to warn people about foreign invasion. We took a peek at the picturesque Acorn Street, which is not only the most photographed street in Boston, but it's one of the most photographed streets in America. We had dinner at a another touristy destination, Cheers, which used to be the Bull and Finch pub. This restaurant inspired the setting for the TV show Cheers. of the evening was walking around the Charles River and watching the sailboats during golden hour. We eventually realized that all of the sailboats were part of a boathouse in which they were actually teaching people how to sail, which was really fun to watch from afar. In our next video, we'll take you through a different area of Boston, via the Freedom Trail.